international efforts here. They're all very good and they're all a threat. And the field is really deep nowadays. Every race has 10 or 15 guys that are really strong. I think it is a, quite an open race tomorrow. The, the women's field, definitely. To be ranked number one in the world means a lot to me. Um, you know, I'm out there to prove a point. I think it's the toughest racing that's out there, and the, the depth of the field and the quality of the field is better every year. In the opening race of the series in Gerard Mare, France, it was business as usual for World Cup champion Brad Bevan. Another convincing win on a tough course. Canadian star Carol Montgomery was equally impressive in the women's race. Victory by over two minutes. Now the athletes have moved across Northern Europe for race two and the packed city centre course in Derry, Northern Ireland. We've come to Derry for the second race in the 1995 ITU Triathlon World Cup Series. But right now I'm at the nearby Giants Causeway. It looks like it's going to be another chilly race day, but that's not really surprising considering we're at the northwestern tip of Ireland. If you were to keep on heading out there, the next stop will be the North Pole. Derry is the second largest city in Northern Ireland, and a crowd of over 25,000 has gathered in the city centre streets to cheer on another strong international field. The race will start in the River Foyle, and if the athletes can overcome the chilly waters, the pace could be fast and furious. At our first race in France two weeks ago, we had a tough hilly course and relatively slow times. Here in Derry, though, it's a different kind of racing, a multi-lap city centre course. We're expecting some very fast times, especially with the World Cup debut of one of the fastest women the sport has ever seen. Last year, Emma Carney took the triathlon world by storm, winning the world championships in her very first attempt. I think Derry will be a great race. It's, um, it'll always be a special race for me because it's my sort of launch in the ITU circuit. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a nice fast race. Oh, the weather's always a sort of factor you've got to think about it with a race, but it, it's the same for everyone, and I've raced in warm, I've raced in cold, so, you know, you just got to take it as it comes. Emma's last race before Derry was in the warp for Fiji, but now it's more than just a change in climate that she'll have to contend with here in Derry. I've never been in a drafting race before, so it's, it's going to be something new to me. Uh, I definitely plan to get off the bike towards the front. I'm not a very good team player, and um, just sitting back in the pack doesn't really sort of suit me. I, I'd rather get away and last the run. The fastest times in World Cup history were set last year at the season opener in Japan. The men's record was set by American Wes Hobson, with Rita Bradshaw from Australia being the first woman to go under two hours. We're expecting to come close to those times today, so let's have a look at some of the athletes on the starting line. Brad Bevan is still the man to beat, his win in Gerard Mare confirming his ranking as the world's top triathlon racer. Don Ryder spoke to him just before this win start. Brad, could we get a word with you? Now, you've started the season with another win. Uh, how are you feeling going into today's race? Uh, fairly good. It's always good to get that first one out of the way. Uh, out of the way. But uh, obviously it's a different race, different conditions, and uh, the guys know how fast to go. Andrew, uh, last week you had a little bit of a tough race in Gerard Mare. Um, how are you feeling this morning? Well, I think I'm feeling a little bit better. I've just been... Uh, not really feeling that well with a bit of an illness and some over over tiredness but uh, i'm trying to get it back together and uh you know i've been really resting up and uh should be getting back on track more and more as uh, as these races progress we're here with uh, hamish carter currently ranked number three in the world uh, hamish tell us how you're feeling this morning uh pretty good actually it's um a lot warmer than i was expecting it to be here in northern ireland so um feeling good for the race and uh, looking forward to that uh first hill on the run more about that hill later. In the women's field, there's no Carol Montgomery, so Gail Lawrence will lead the North American Challenge. But with the race fast approaching, there's only one name on their minds. Well, Emma is a um, remarkable athlete, and um, it's really a thrill to race in the same race with her because, you know, she is just incredible. 
So the course. A slightly shortened swim in the river foil. The water temperature is at about 10 degrees Celsius. The bike ride is fast and relatively flat. A four loop course that takes the athletes across two bridges on the river foil. And the run course, five times around the city center with a steep 400 meter hill at the start of each lap. That may well be the point where the race is won or lost. So the scene is set. Let's join commentators Matt Chilton and Don Ryder down at the start line. First of all, then, here's Don. We're minutes away from the swim start here in Derry. Much colder water temperature than last week in Girard Mare. In fact, the water temperature is somewhere between 9 and 10 degrees. Now, this race is timed to go precisely at 12, 12 p.m. because that's slack tide. This is an estuary, and the current could take them right out to the ocean if the current exists. Hopefully, slack tide will prove to be exactly that. Promises to be an exciting race, so stay tuned. Thank you, Don. So round two about to get underway. First of all, let's catch up with Irish-American Garrett McCarthy, who's talking to Catherine about the conditions. What do you think about swimming in these waters here? Because we've seen it's like a tidal flat, isn't it? It looks a bit, a bit gross. It's a bit murky. Um, I love the cold water. Swim well, I don't love the cold water. I hate it, but I hate it a lot less than the, the other swimmers because as a swimmer, uh, growing up, you always had to swim in cold pools, so it really doesn't uh, freak me out as much as it freaks other people out. Garrett McCarthy, based in the U.S., an Irish-American, always very well supported when he races here in Ireland. We'll be keeping a lookout for him during the competition, and the water temperature is absolutely freezing. It started off cold in Gerard Mayer in round one, but now they've moved into even colder conditions for round two of the 1995 ITU World Cup Series. The Northern Ireland leg, they're in the river foil, a kilometre and a half through these icy waters, and the pack immediately spreading out as they attack stage one of this triathlon. Don has joined me in the commentary position. How much effect is this going to have on some of the races, Don, this cold water? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that they're going to feel the cold, and it's going to be hard to get going once they're on the bike. Interesting thing that happened here, Matt, because it is a tidal estuary. In fact, they had to begin the race at precisely 12-12, or slack tide. But even so, that tidal flow is going to have an effect. May speed them up on part of it, but will slow them down on the other part because it's a basic out-and-back course. Exactly two minutes after the men, the women about to start. Emma Carney making her World Cup debut. We'll be keeping a very close eye on her. Emma Carney, of course, the world champion. That event she won in Wellington in the autumn of 1994. And the women just waiting for the signal from the starter to begin their race, and away they go. A smaller field for the women, missing one or two of the uh, races we saw in Gerard Mayer, most notably perhaps Carol Montgomery not appearing here in round two, the winner of round one. But uh, she's been more than ably replaced by uh, Emma Carney, the world champion. In the men's field, Brad Bevan, the winner in Gerard Mayer, taking up an early lane here in the swim. We asked Hamish Carter and Andrew McMartin how they intended to deal with the Bevan phenomenon. Well, I think at the moment Brad's um, only outrunning us, so it's only one discipline out of the three which um, we're both working on, and um, hopefully eventually we will uh, beat him. Well, Hamish and I are both pretty young. I think Hamish is 23 and I'm 22, so, you know, every dog has his day. We're just, uh, we're pretty new at this, and uh, we've got a lot of years in front of us. It's every man for himself, um, but you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, if we can get together and, um, and put a break on the field, then we will. Slightly more resolute Tamish Carter than we saw in Gerard Mayer. He, of course, dropped out there. This is the women's field. That's uh, Gail Lawrence of the United States, the winner of one event last year in Bahia, Brazil. That was a pulsating competition that Gail won last year. She leads the way here. She's uh, closely followed by, in the yellow cap there, the reigning world champion, Emma Carney, making her debut. And a lot of people expecting great things from Carney. She's a great athlete. We're back to the men now. You can see them heading in towards the finish line. I think it's interesting to note that there are no swim specialists here this week, as there were two weeks ago in Girard Mare, where we had the Sanson brothers. This is the swim course. The water temperature, as you can see, 10 degrees. The men just on the, their return 
to the dock. The women's still out in the river, and it's an interesting finish. They have to come alongside the dock here, and then they climb up a metal ladder. It's not the most ideal finish, but uh, the crowd are certainly swelling in numbers as the triathlon reaches the end of its first stage. You can see now Brad Bevan there in the red cap. He's in about fourth place right now. And looking up front in the greenish cap there, that's Hamish Carter in the lead, getting very close to the stairs by which they'll exit. Tremendous crowd support there lining the banks of the river foil and the tide seemingly not harming them at all. They're expecting around 25,000 visitors. This has been very well publicized in this part of Northern Ireland. And so far, that number seems definitely attainable. Carter comes out of the water first in the green cap, climbs up. He's getting a helping hand at the top there. As you can see, it's not the best exit from the water. There's Bevan in the red in uh, about fourth place now. Carter taking off his swimming gear on his way to transition. Off with the swimming cap, starts to undo the wetsuit, heads for his bike. He'll have practiced this routine in his mind. Valuable seconds can be won and lost during transition. The wetsuit will come off, the cycling helmet and the shades will go on, and then they'll head out for 40 kilometers, a circuit around the city of Derry. You can see in the purple cap right now, that's Mark Bates of Canada in his first World Cup here this year. But right now, Brad Bevan putting on the helmet, getting ready in this transition area to go out there for the 40K cycle. There's uh, Hamish Carter, Jochen Villen of Sweden just coming out. He's the first man to exit transition. You can see his bike shoes attached to the pedals. Philippe Pittori, the Frenchman, arrives to exit stage one out of the water a long way back. And as he does so, the leading three men, led by Jochen Villen, the Swede, then there's Brad Bevan and Hamish Carter, they are making their way out of transition. So you can see Pittori, who's a strong runner, still has quite a lot of work to do. There's Mark Bates, the Canadian, his first race on the ITU Tour for this season. But the official standings at the end of the swim. Hamish Carter leads the way ahead of Bevan, Villain, Henrik Nobelin of Sweden and Mark Simone. A couple of new names there. This is what lies next for the triathletes. 40 kilometers on the bike, four laps around the city of Derry. Twice they cross the river on each lap. And here, already way out on the bike section, the three leading men, Jochen Villen of Sweden. Behind him in the red is Hamish Carter, who dropped out in Gerard Mare. And behind Carter, the man who won in Gerard Mare the first race of the season, the man who won the whole series in 1994, the unstoppable Brad Bevan of Australia. Now we can see that there's nobody in sight behind those guys, but we're back to the women's lead. And then the yellow cap we just saw, that was Emma Carney, the world champion. You can see Gail Lawrence up front as well. Marcy Cantu in the purple cap. So the women in a large pack. And there's our Japanese athlete, Taro Shirato uh, of Japan, the top ranked athlete. But we're back to the women's race right now. And they're catching up to Mr. Shirato. Well, he may be the highest ranked uh, Japanese athlete in the field but uh, he's in danger of being caught by the women's field, and uh, I'm sure he wouldn't want that to happen. You can see there's a huge crowd here. Some people have been saying that uh, they're so amazed that these people actually want to swim in the river foil. It is a dirty-looking river. I think it's not so much pollution. It's a lot of mud being um, stirred up from the bottom of the river. It's a tidal estuary, remember? So it's not perhaps as dirty as it may appear, but the locals absolutely astounded that the triathletes should be swimming in it. Now, the first athletes to reach transition. And that would include two Americans in the lead there, Marcy Cantu, behind her, Gail Lawrence, who's an excellent swimmer, and right behind her, in third place, Isabelle Mouton of France, entering that all-important transition area. You can see them taking their wetsuits off and getting ready for that 40-kilometer cycle. Gail Lawrence, always easy to recognize out on the cycle. That's a yellow bib of hers she always wears. Lawrence ranked second in the ITU World Rankings behind Jenny Rose. Now, we're getting an early indication of the swim times, and they appear to be quicker than normal. That could be as a result of the tidal effect, or it could also be the fact that the course is a little shorter than normal. But, of course, it's the same for everybody, and it's the same for Emma Carney, the world champion. All eyes on her from the other athletes. She's caught the stir by arriving here. They know what she's capable of, and she started promisingly. She's up there with the leading group. There's Janet Hatfield of the United States exiting, but it's another American, Gail Lawrence, in the yellow, who's the first of the women to exit transition. 
And you can see her looking around while she's putting her feet in the shoes. The shoes are always attached to the bike pedals to, say, to save valuable seconds while they're transitioning. She's looking around. We can see behind her some of the others following, and that would include Isabel Mouton looking like she's in second. There are the swim times, 16.07, that is quite quick. Lawrence is first out of transition. We spoke to her about her thoughts on this week's race. I just want to get out either ahead or with the leaders and stay with the pack because that's where I lost it in Gerard Mer. I just wasn't with the lead group. I could have stayed with them, and I know I could. Have, I was easily capable of a, a fourth place there. Um, but I just didn't catch on to the ride. I lost the boat, so, so to speak. There's Emma Carney, the world champion, and there's Jenny Rose in, I think, third or fourth position at the moment. Jenny Rose, last year's World Cup leader. There's the current leader in this race, Gail Lawrence. Very consistent season last year. She was seldom, in fact, uh, never out of the top ten, apart from in the World Championships and the races she finished. But she didn't have such a great start in Gerald now. We're back with the men. And we can see right now the croc Brad Bevan moving to the front of that pack to take his turn pulling behind him Hamish Carter and Jochen Villen in third. The three of them coming around for their very first lap. We'll try and give you an idea of how far they are in front of the chase group, but they're looking solid. They're working together. Now Hamish in front. They're working really well, and I think that they have an advantage because they are working so well. Let's see how much of an advantage it might turn out to be. Just three of them together and uh, that will certainly suit Hamish Carter and Brad Bevan. They know that uh, they've got to get up as far ahead of the strong runners as possible during the fight. And with three of them, they've got uh, no worries about or, or fewer worries about collisions with other riders. And there is a larger chasing pack. That's the second group in the men's competition. And at the front of that chasing pack on the left of your screens there is Andrew McMartin, I think. Yes, it is Andrew McMartin of Canada. Mark Bates is in that group. There's uh, one or two slightly lesser known athletes. You can see the French colours there. It's not Philippe Vittori. It's one of the other French team. Now we're back with the leading group and the time difference between the two, Don, is... It's actually 46 seconds, so they're starting to gap that chase group. They're working very well together. And speaking of working well together, we can see the chase group for the women. There are There's Emma Carney in third and Jenny Rose in fourth. And the reason they're even up there, Kirsty Otto right behind them, Jenny and Emma had the two fastest transitions, almost 20 seconds faster than any of the other women. And that's allowed them to get right up and get on the chase group that's following Gail Lawrence, our leader. Gail Lawrence leads the way, and uh, when you look at the chasing group, remember that Emma Carney has never raced in a drafting competition before. This is the first time she's ever done it, so it'll be a new experience for, for her. And as you can just see at the back of that uh, camera shot, and that's the shot from the chasing group up to the leader, Gail Lawrence. That's the chasing group. It's Emma Carney who's taking it up now, out of the saddle, doing the work, and back with the men, the same three still together. Jochen Villen mixing in the highest company here with Hamish Carter and Brad Bevan, the three of these guys, equally uh, helpful to each other, taking their turn. Emma Carney at the front of the women's chase group, and I'm sure it won't be long before they've hauled in Gail Lawrence. It's tough for her to stay out in front and to fend off the challenge from behind. There's Jenny Rose, last year's champion. There's Isabel Mouton, did well in Gerard Mayer. We've heard lots about Emma Carney, the women's world champion. Let's catch up on news on Spencer Smith, the men's champion with Steve True. Steve, give us a few words about Spencer. At the moment, Spencer is just awesome. I mean, he's a world champion. He's demonstrated in every race this year. He deserves to be world champion. At, at the British race last week, he, he was absolutely superb. He took his time on the first part of the swim, and on the second half, he took almost a minute out of all the other guys there. And that includes top-class international swimmers in their own right. On the biking, I honestly think it's the best bike split I've ever seen in a triathlon. Uh, within 10 miles, he took another minute into the chasing pack. He overtook the women, who started 10 minutes before him by 15 miles. And he just had an absolutely clear run on the final 10 kilometers. He was able to jog almost on the side of the 5K. Absolutely superb. Well, that bodes well for the rest of the season. Do you think we'll see him out in the World Cup? And how do you think he would do against this kind of field? I think he's going to have a magnificent season. Uh, I hope he's going to do the ICU World Championships. Uh, as we know, he's twice won the seniors, once won the juniors. Wouldn't it be fantastic if he could be a triple world champion for the ICU? Words of wisdom from Steve True, one of the leading triathlon coaches in Great Britain, responsible for bringing up the youngsters. And eventually, this is what they become. Top-class, world-beating triathletes. The men's leading group, led by Brad Bourbon with Hamish Carter 
and Joachim Willem. Now, back with the women. And in that women's pack, you can see Gail Lawrence being reeled in right now. They're getting very close to passing her. Jenny Rose leading the attack right now. And in there, Isabel Mouton. We have Emma Carney, of course. We have Kirsty Otto. And in fact, they've now reeled in Gail Lawrence. So they've caught that solo that Gail went out on. Hamish Carter taking his turn at the front of the men's group while Brad Bevan takes a feed. And at the same time, the women's leading group approaching now the end of their first lap. And leading the way in the blue helmet on her World Cup debut, the ITU World Cup debut, is the world champion, Emma Carney, who looks a lot fitter and stronger than she did in Wellington last November when she won that World Championships. We haven't seen too much of her prior to that, but she was looking slimmer and she looks a much tougher force to be reckoned with on this year's ITU. And what a dream start for her, out in front. There's one or two of the back markers, including some local triathlete races, and they've already been lapped by the leading men, but they're still getting a lot of healthy support from this enthusiastic dairy crowd. The weather's brightened up as well. The sun's come out, and it's actually quite a pleasant afternoon here in Northern Ireland. Possibly the British summer is about to begin. Long overdue, though it is. Don has actually left the commentary position, and he's now trackside. All right, we've got the athletes just having made their first lap now on this course. They've come past the start. In the men, there's a pack of three in the lead. They're working together, and that includes Hamish and Brad. In the women's race, the five favorites are all together in that lead pack. Interestingly enough, Emma Carty, our current world champion, is in her first ever drafting race. She's leading right now, and she needs to learn to back off a little and let some of the others take the pull. You'll remember, she said she was gonna try and get away early, but they're sucking on her wheel and sticking with her. Emma Carney leading the way, and Don is making his way back to the commentary position now to cast his expert eye over the rest of proceedings here in Derry. Round two of the ITU World Cup Series for 1995 with the 94 women's world champion, Emma Carney, leading the field. We're back with the men, and it's the same three as it has been since the end of the swim. In the red is Hamish Carter. On the left of your screens there with the green bike is the croc, Brad Bevan. And to his left, a slightly surprising uh, triathlete making an appearance there, and that's Joachim Villain. But Villain is holding his own, and he's really done well to stay with Carter and with Bevan. Don's back in the commentary position. The men have been doing laps in about 15 minutes dead on, so they're doing about 25 miles an hour, 40K an hour as they go around. The women are taking about 16 minutes, which is about 24 miles an hour. And we're getting our first look now at the third group. The men's field has split into three groups. That's Javier Lobe of Spain, the junior. Right behind him, Philippe Vittori also in that group. I wonder how far behind they are from the group in front of them as well as the leaders. We'll get a look at that in just moments as they come by for their second lap. Now ahead of the second group, Mark Bates, the Canadian, has made a break for it, attempting to get closer to Bevan, to Villain and to Carter, who lead the way. And Bates looking strong, looking comfortable, plenty of cycling in him. He's uh, made a challenge to this second group. And now we've actually got uh, the leading three, then Bates, then this group. And then the third, or now even the fourth chasing group, so it's all getting split up in the men's. But out in front, the top three hasn't changed. It's still Bevan, Carter, and Villain. And here's that third group once again. They're trying to work together to bridge up to that second group. Javier Lope off the back there. Richard Allen leading that group, the junior from Britain, who is just an awesome athlete. He did well at the British Nationals, came second there last week. The crowd swelling all the time. The weather's brought them out. They're so enthusiastic. They really welcome this sport to Northern Ireland. As you can see, every vantage point along the road is taken. Seldom that you see such enthusiasm in Britain for a triathlon. It's good to see. Here we go now to the men's leaders. Joachim Villain taking his lead at the front. Hamish Carter tucked in behind. Joachim taking on some well-needed water as the sun comes out and it gets a little hotter. Brad Bevan, the croc tucked in in third place. I'm sure he'll be moving up to take his turn at the front. These three have now gained more time, another 30 seconds on that second lap because they're well organized like a well-oiled machine, tic-tac-toe, and they move along. Now the three black dots at the bottom of the graphic there represent where the three groups are. You can see the lead group just out on their third lap. And there's the leader, Hamish Carter of New Zealand, just swinging wide as they take that left-hander. 
Bevan, head down, concentrating. He's going to be so tough to beat. And we're now back to the lead women. Gail Lawrence now having been absorbed by that group, that Sophie Delamere leading an excellent cyclist. I don't think she'd be able to hang on for the run, but she can cycle and pull. And here we see, on her own, Marcy Cantu struggling on her own. She's been dropped off the back of that chase group. And as she comes by, she's almost three minutes down on the lead. It shows you how important it is to catch that pack as they go out there. Indeed it does, and Sophie Delamere has done that. She did it too in Gerard Mayer, showing her strength on the bike pulling her way back after slightly disappointing swims to get right back in the thick of it. And they're gonna come around now and head in past the transition area for their second lap. We'll try and get a sense of how far they're ahead when that chase group comes through, but they're looking like they're working very well together. As we've said, look at Emma Carney now, back there in fourth place, she's learning to get back in the pack and let others do some of the work. Sophie working very hard right now as they come past for the second time and the crowd still cheering they came out in big force unbelievable to see them there these northern ireland people have really embraced the sport the lead men out on their own the three of them still no change bevan carter and Joachim villain and villain tucks in behind brad bevan takes up the running and then moves aside for carter to slide alongside him take his turn at the front of the field Bevan will drop back to third place it's tactical but it's effective and uh, obviously there's uh, there's honor between the three of them here at this stage but I can guarantee you that the moment they enter transition and move to the run that will all be thrown out of the window and it'll be a race for glory and Mark Bates race for glory has come to an end you can see him at the front he's about to be swallowed up by this chase group which is actually surprising given the way they're riding right now they don't seem to be working that well together but they've done enough but these men working well as they head over the foil bridge it's very windy they're going to be getting a crosswind there as it comes down the estuary you can see them struggling the cadence slowing down on the bike they're pushing hard look at the muscles as they work up that hill there's Emma Carney in the blue. This is the women's lead group. There's Jenny Rose just behind her. And at the back of the pack, there's Kirsty Otto of Canada, who's actually been in that position at the back of the pack for quite some time now. Gail Lawrence in the yellow on the right. And the women working well. They're looking around, almost questioning each other. OK, Emma Carney's saying, I'll take it up for the moment, but uh, I expect one of you to come along and do the running, take up the running again in a second. She's learning, and not a bad race so far for her first drafting race her first itu world cup race there's marcy Cantu way back off the pace now slightly hapless looking at this stage Cantu not happy at all with her performance so far but this lead pack has to be happy with their performance so far because they're working well they're working very well together in fact they've gained another minute on that second chase group which we hope to see shortly and Emma Carney still in the lead, taking her turn. There's that second chase group. That's Janet Hatfield in the lead. And behind her, Natasha Hilgeholt of New Zealand. They're almost three minutes down right now on those leaders. Marcy Cantu in third on her own, over three minutes back. I don't think she'll be moving up to that chase group. Once again, back to the leaders. Gail Lawrence on the left, moving towards the front to take her turn. Emma Carney allowing that to happen. She's learning well. And here are the lead men about to pass one of the back markers and it's Hamish Carter pulling away. Matt, what do you see so far here? Well, possibly without knowing it, the Swede Jochen Willem is helping Bevan and Carter along. He stayed with them and he's helped them to keep up the pace to keep a gap between them and the chasing group. And it'll be interesting to see how much longer Willem can stay in there because on paper, he's not as strong as Carter or Bevan. Now, the two chasing groups seem to about to become one in the men's competition, and there's some good athletes in there. There's the Spaniard who you mentioned earlier. Garrett McCarthy, the Irish-American with the green for Ireland disc wheel, is there. And uh, as well as Andrew McMartin, the Canadian, he's up there. And they're about to merge into one big chasing group. And it'll be interesting to see if they can work well enough to get anywhere near Bevan and Carter and Villain. We mustn't forget about Villain. Richard Allen leads the way at the moment in the chasing group, second in the World Junior Championships last year. One of the bright prospects for British triathlon. He was second to Spencer Smith as well in the British Championships a couple of weeks ago. And Allen leads the chasing group as they come into the throng of the Irish supporters here in Derry. 
And this will be their third lap as they go by here, and they've lost additional time on the leaders, another 30 seconds down. So Dylan is certainly playing into the hands of Hamish and Brad, but he's also helping himself. Maybe if he gets off that bike with enough of a lead, he can break into that top 10, which is, I'm sure, going to be a thrill for him. And there they are, once again, working together. Now, I can see Brad Bevan and Jochen Villen exchanging a few comments there, working together and talking together on the bike here. It could be that Brad was just saying, OK, Jochen, off you go. Your turn to make the running at the front. And now we see Richard Allen taking on some much-needed water as he leads that large pack. Look at them. There's close to a dozen of them in there, and Philippe Fattori would be in there. We've got to keep an eye out for him. We've got Garrett McCarthy in there, Andrew McMartin in there, and, of course, Mark Bates. I think the course... Uh, especially the run course is going to be the toughest part. Um, the weather will definitely be a factor. It's going to be a little cold and swim and on the bike, especially if it's raining. But I think it will come down to the run. There'll be a group of people together. And uh, whoever can run up that hill the fastest will have it. Bates referring to the fearsome hill, which is included in the run course, that they have to tackle five times. You just have to wait and see just how tough that is because it really is a worry. There's Christoph Malk of uh, Switzerland making a break. He's pulled away from the chasing group and having a go on his own, perhaps in an attempt to get near the three leaders. Well, as they approach, I believe now they're starting on that final lap. They're going over the old bridge, so now is the time when all bets are off. It's time to position yourself as much as you can for that run. He's going to try and get away from some of the runners in behind him who he knows he would have to face going up that hill five times. Also trying to get away, still the men's leaders as they head into town and get ready for a transition. Again, Brad Bevan, Hamish Carter, and Jochen Villan having a race of his life right now. In the women's competition, it's Emma Carney of Australia, from Sophie Delamere of France, Isabel Mouton also of France, then Jenny Rose of New Zealand, Gail Lawrence of the United States, and at the back of the group where she's been for a long time, Kirsty Otto of Canada. You could see Jenny Rose shouting to the back, and maybe she's saying to Kirsty, come on, Kirsty, it's your turn up front right now. They've all got to work together. It's something that we've got to learn to do now that there's drafting. Janet Hatfield still working with Natasha Hilgeholt. In fact, Natasha's just off the front of her as they head up the new bridge, the foil bridge, struggling into that wind. You can see her working hard. And once again, we see those lead women in that pack. And at the front of the field at the moment is Isabel Mouton, who was second in Gerard Mare. There's uh, Christophe Malk, who's been reeled in by the pack he tried in vain to break away from a few moments ago. And he's now been closed down. Jean-Christophe Guinchard of Switzerland, his teammate, is just behind him. And these three still out in front, still making the running, as they have done since the end of the swim. I wonder how much longer Jochen Billen can stay in touch with these two. Brad Bevan, the number one triathlete in the world at the moment. Behind him, one of his fiercest rivals, but a man who, who's been out of luck recently and somewhat out of form. Hamish Carter, really with a point to prove here. Did not finish a big DNF next to his name in Gerard Mayer, the opening triathlon. And Hamish Carter would dearly love to finish, if not close to Brad Bevan, then ahead of him. Villain is still there, and as Don said, having the race of his life. We're back to the lead women once again. We can see Jenny Rose sitting there. Big smile on her face. I don't know what's going on, but she seems to be having fun. Maybe it's all that crowd support. I think there's a little bit of banter going on between Gail Lawrence there in the yellow and Jenny Rose. They know each other well. One or two words. Uh, I'm sure all very lighthearted in the spirit of the sport. Jenny putting her head down and having a go. There's Sophie Delamere brilliant cyclist once again she's really led the way she's come up from nowhere after the swim to be amongst the leaders also coming up from almost nowhere at the beginning of the swim we see Christoph Mauk leading that chase group look at them there's almost a dozen of them behind him is his teammate that's Jean-Christophe Guichard now he's going to, oh there's Renny Rompto now and you can see in the back the chase pack is saying come on someone else's turn up front there and Remy Rompto sits up on his seat, says, come on, guys, work with me on this. If we're going to catch this group, which is including Brad Bevan Hamish now. And they've, made, and they've broken away from Jock and Villain coming towards transition. Carter and Bevan, as we suspected might happen, have broken away from the Swede, who's been working with them all the way through the bike. And now it's neck and neck 
between Carter and Bevan. In fact, Bevan, uh, to his credit, hasn't let them get too far away. And in fact, he'll be right on their tails coming into transition. So I was perhaps being slightly uh, unfair to Bevan. He's right there as they come to transition. Through the marker, off the bikes. They push the bikes through. This is obligatory now. They have to do this. They push the bikes through to the transition area. Then it'll be off with the helmets, on with the running shoes, and 10 kilometers between them and the end of the race. And I wouldn't want to bet against Brad Bevan at this stage. No, and the transition is all important here. Hamish getting his shoes on quickly. Brad going out very quickly as well. Right in front of Hamish, and Joachim Billum starting to struggle already. You can see the professionalism. Here comes the second group, which includes Christoph Mauck and J.C. Guinchard. Bevan out of transition first. He is the strongest runner by far of the three that have just come into transition. And look at him, he looks so strong. Amazing to think that after a kilometer and a half of swimming, 40 Ks on the bike, he's looking like he's just uh, jogged around the park. And these two, they had the fastest bike split. Christoph Moke just over an hour and third. JC Guinchard had the third fastest bike. And Christoph moved from seventh to fourth as a result of that excellent cycle. Bevan, first time up the fearsome hill, which he'll have to negotiate a further four times. Meanwhile, in transition, the battle goes on for the minor places. Arriving in transition, one of the stronger runners, Philippe Fattori of France. Hanging his bike up, down with the helmet, on with the shoes. A little stumble from Philippe. Vital seconds to be won and lost here. Mark Bates also there, and we can see Richard Allen head out on the run just in front of Philippe Fattori, that young junior. What a great man he is. And here's Andrew McMartin struggling greatly with his shoes. Got to remember to take that helmet off. And there goes Andrew. What a breakaway that was from Bevan, though. And he now has to deal with this fearsome run course. Ten kilometers, five times he'll have to go up that 400-meter hill. Christoph Malk has the fastest time on the bike, one hour, 0.58. Richard Allen is six seconds back, Guichard 18 seconds back, and Carter and Bevan in fourth and fifth. But that doesn't matter, that's immaterial because it's Bevan all the way. There we have Richard Allen right in front of Philippe Vattori. That's how they headed out on that run. But Brad Bevan, look at how smooth he's looking around, wondering how far back everyone is. He just gets into his running so quickly. He has an excellent transition, and more importantly, he gets into his pace and his stride almost immediately. You can see no one behind him now. Now, here's the women's group. Emma Carney leads the way. Just ahead of Sophie Della is Isabel Mouton, an Australian and two French women. Then behind her is Gail Lawrence. Jenny Rose is there too, and right at the back where she's been almost since the start of the bike race, Kirsty Otto of Canada. Now there's Richard Allen. He's in sixth place in the men's competition. Behind him is Philippe Fattori in seventh. And they're now going in search of the two Swiss athletes, Malk and Ginshaven, out in front, leading the way, looking strong, looking relaxed, looking comfortable, and looking like he's on his way to yet another victory. It's Brad Bevan. The women right now, these lead women, are starting to head in towards transition. They'll be starting to jockey for position shortly. You can still see Kirsty Otto off the back, but there we are, our men. There's Mark Bates now up in that group as well. These men all fighting for sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth right now, and they're gonna try and bridge up onto the two Swiss athletes, J.C. Guichard and Christophe Mouch, who had excellent cycles. There's the man leading the way, Bevan. What an astonishing athlete he is. From week in, week out, he trains hard, he works hard and he comes and on the day he always or he nearly always produces the goods now we heard steve true saying earlier that he thought that spencer smith might be making his way forward this year to his third consecutive world championships well i wouldn't be quite so sure of that i would think that brad bevan wants it and he's hungrier for it than ever before and i would be betting on brad bevan for that title this year and there's Brad now as he's just come through for the first time and he's going back up that hill. You can't tell how steep that hill is from this picture, but if you look at the spectators, you'll see what an angle they're standing on. This is about 400 meters of over a 15% grade and they hit it right away after transition and they're gonna do it five times. Here's the women. Now they're making their way to transition. One or two of the back markers in the men's competition being passed there. And as you can hear from Steve True, who's doing the announcing at this event, it's the USA leading. In fact, it's Gail Lawrence coming in first. 
Behind her is Isabel Mouton of France. Then Sophie Delamea, also of France. Then Jenny Rose, the World Cup champion of last year. Then the new girl, the bright young star triathlon from Australia, Emma Carney. They'll all be looking out for her because they know just how strong she is on the run. Carney puts on her shoes. It'll be off with the helmet, and then we'll see what Carney's made of as they exit transition and onto the run. No rushing from Emma Carney, taking her time, and away she goes. Well, she doesn't have to rush because she knows that she is the fastest runner in the field as we see Kirsty Otto go out there, who had the fastest bike split. Sophie Delamere was 14 seconds behind her, Rose 15, Lawrence 17 back, and Mouton had the fifth fastest time on the bike. Now the girls up the hill for the first time, and immediately Emma Carney moves to the front, ahead of Isabel Mouton, who's a good runner herself, and Sophie Delamere, whose strongest discipline has just been completed the bike, and Carney, look at her, powering up the hill as if it's not there. There's Mouton and there's Delamere, the French pairing. Behind her, just in the background, is Jenny Rose. And behind Jenny Rose is Gail Lawrence, the American. Emma Carney doesn't take a feed, concentrating, looking ahead. Now she's got to set her mind on the task, but already she's opened up a gap of some 10 or 15 meters on the chasing pack. And this is what they all feared from Emma Carney. They knew what she was capable of. They'd seen her in the World Championships, but now she's doing it here in the World Cup. Jenny Rose also looking strong, but look at Emma. She reminds me of Brad Bevan, the way she runs, hands high, like a sprinter, immediately into her pace and rhythm. Just an excellent runner, and there's Brad. That's the perfect juxtaposition of those two. They run very similarly. Excellent runners, these Aussies, and especially Emma Carney, who comes from a running background, but Brad looking very smooth as he comes around for what's going to be the second lap for him. And we'll try and get a sense of how far ahead of the men he is when we see them come through as he turns and heads up that long 400-meter hill. That's a tough one that he's got to face. There's Hamish Carter just coming into shot. He's in second position. Carter, the New Zealander, looking a lot more with it than he was in Gerald Mayer in round one. But you can compare the styles between he and the race leader, Brad Bevan. He's strong, he's fit, he's one of the fittest athletes in the world at the moment, and he's proving it here today. Now here's the group that are trying to fight it out for minor places. Amongst this group, who would you suggest is the better runner? Well, I think you've got Philippe Fattori in there, who's an excellent runner. He's right behind Mark Bates now, and you'll notice at the back where they've just passed Jochen Villain. Now Brad on that first lap, you'll notice Hamish and he went out together. He's put 10 seconds into Hamish on one lap, so the better runner, Brad, is still going strong. And you can see Mark Bates, Philippe Fattori. There you have Richard Allen in third, and Remy Rompteau of France in behind. French have got a lot of talent in depth in their triathlon squad at the moment, both in the men's and the women's competition. Mouton leads the way in the women's, Fattori leads the way in the men's, and I'm sure it won't be long before we see Philippe Fattori make a break away from this group. He is a stronger runner than all of the... Uh, Athletes he's racing with there, but he's not as strong as this man. Brad Bevan of Australia leads the way, and he's out for a jog, isn't he? He's enjoying it. Now, at the back of this group of three, that's Garrett McCarthy in the red top. McCarthy, the Irish-American, being warmly welcomed here in Derry as he comes to round the bend and at climb the hill. We're back to the women's leader right now, Emma Carney, as she comes through that start-finish area for the very first time. The crowd getting behind her, though maybe not as much as Garrett McCarthy. She's looking strong. She's on an excellent pace. We'll try and get the difference between her and second place as they come through. She's turning now and heading up that long, difficult hill that Brad's just climbed in front of her. Isabel Mouton in second position in the women's competition. She finished second in Gerard Mayer. She's made the break on Jenny Rose, who we just saw in the background. Mouton attacks the hill, but uh, it's an almost impossible task for her to catch Carney now. There's Jenny Rose, the World Cup champion of last season. And there, out in front, is Emma Carney. These scenes almost reminiscent of when she won in the World Championships in Wellington, as we see Gail Lawrence uh, some way back now, and looking not quite as relaxed as she was on the bike. Brad Bevan. Leads the way in the men's competition. He comes past the Guild Hall. He still looks full of running. He still looks absolutely brimming with energy. Takes the feed again. Perhaps it's a, a sponge, I think, just to 
cool himself down. It's quite a warm afternoon now. Hamish Carter is still in second. Head down, concentrating. He also passes that guild hall. He's looking better than last week. Now, Emma still in the lead. And on that first lap, she put 20 seconds into Isabel and 32 into Jenny. Now, we see our two leaders, the two Aussies, as they're leading as they go through Derry here. And you can still see tremendous spectator support. The city of Derry got behind this race like I've never seen at a race of this distance before. It's fantastic. Brad enjoying it. The crowd really picks you up when you're out there. It really does make a difference, even to the professional triathletes. It's that hill again, Bevan looks at it and it's one more time up he goes 400 meters now we mentioned about the world championships and the crowd scenes at wellington last autumn when emma carney came through that was a brilliant day for the carney family because on the same day in the same city her sister claire won the world junior title as well just uh, to make it a double celebration for the carney family as bevan moves off into the distance there's carter in the red last time up this tough exhausting hill for Brad Bevan and then uh, barring a mistake or barring injury it would be a formality to take it home. And there's Brad Bevan passing one of the back markers Emma Carney all on her own nobody in sight as she just keeps on sprinting along running is her strongest discipline in fact she only learned to swim two years ago she took it up imagine that coming from this tremendous running background and there are the men with their very strategic race for what will turn out to be third place possibly. Philippe Pittori on the left, behind him with the red polka dotted top is Richard Allen, the Briton, the leading Briton in this competition. In fact, there's the second place woman, the world long distance ITU champion, that's uh, Isabel Mouton, but she's got her work cut out. There's no way back now for Mouton. She's been shown the way home by the world champion making her debut, Emma Carney, and this man leading the way in the men's competition, the unmistakable figure of the croc. Brad Bevan, known as the croc, because rumor has it that he trains for a swim in the crocodile-infested rivers of his hometown of Queensland. Bevan comes through to the final stages of round two of the 1995 ITU World Cup Triathlon Series, to so the cheers and the welcomes of the good people of Derry. Bevan enjoying himself out there, this is going to be two out of two for the World Cup champion. And as I mentioned earlier, I would put a lot of money on him to win the World Championship this year. Bevan takes the salute of the crowd and comes home to win in Derry. Round two goes to Brad Bevan, as indeed did round one. And he now dominates the men's standings for this year. Behind him, Hamish Carter, the New Zealander, disappointed in Gerard Mayer when he didn't finish having got injured in the run. Carter comes home to take second and put a new bright light on his season. A good run from Hamish Carter, but let's hear from Bevan. Hamish, if you win, you'll never get to beat anybody else. You're always first across the line. You did it again today. Tell us how it was out there. Um, the swim was obviously very cold, but I wanted to come out somewhere up the front. There was a fairly strong current coming back, so the shorter swim sort of compensated for the, for the current. But... Uh, we, there were three of us on the bike, and I didn't think uh, we'd hold our lead with a, there was a pack of about five, I think I could see. But uh, <coughs> each time we could see where they were, and they seemed to be dropping off, so we wanted to keep it going. And uh, we're working very well together. Philippe Pittori has made a break away from the pack, and he looks like he will claim third, much to his delight. Don, what I want to know is how come Brad Bevan can do all that, and he doesn't even break sweat? Well, there's no question that he's truly a triathlete. He's excellent in all three disciplines. He doesn't have a weakness like this man, Philip Fattori, who comes across the line, might have an excellent runner, but not a great swimmer. Great Britain's Richard Allen came home for an excellent fourth position. Rennie Robto of France finished fifth, but there was no doubt about the one, two, three. Bevan makes it two out of two. Carter second, and Philippe Fattori third for France. Christoph Mauch out sprinted Mark Bates to take sixth place. It wasn't such a good day for Andrew McMartin, who dropped out. The women's race still underway, but there's no doubt about the result now. Emma Carney on her World Cup baptism here in Ireland has outshone the rest of the field. They feared that it would be this way. They saw her 
in the World Championships in Wellington last autumn, come home with a breathtaking finish, and she's done the same here. It will be an Australian double here this afternoon in Derry in round two, and we hope very much that Emma Carney will stay with the ITU series for most of the rest of the season because she is in a class of her own. She takes the support of the crowd. Emma Carney is the champion of the Derry Triathlon. Let's have a word with her. Yep. Emma, you came off the bike with a group of girls and you're miles ahead. We can't see anybody yet. Tell us how it was out there. Um, I didn't feel too good in the swim today and got out a bit behind. I thought I'd better get away on the bike, but I couldn't. Something new to me drafting and it looks like just better sit there and run away from me. Second place for the second race running for Isabel Mouton of France. She comes home some way back, but on the podium. And Jenny Rose smiled as usual, enjoying herself. Third position for the defending World Cup champion. Confirmation of those results. Carney, Mouton, Rose, the one, two, three. Sophie Delamere, four. And Kirsty Otto, fifth for Canada. Gail Lawrence, the early leader on the bike, eventually finished in sixth position. The crowds in Derry treated to a great afternoon's racing, and the athletes will be happy that they gave them such good support. This race also counting four points on the European circuit. For the World Cup standings, it'll look like this. Isabel Mouton leads the way for France, Jenny Rose is second, and Sophie Delamere third. Men's competition, Bevan has a 100% record. Philippe Vittori is second, and it's the Swiss athlete, Jean-Christophe Guichard, in third. John, what a fabulous race here in Derry. One of the best I've ever seen. An Aussie double. Well, it's amazing. These Aussies have proved absolutely that they're world class. Brad, Mr. Consistency, number one again. And Emma Carney, you've got to say, the world's best. And what do you think about the crowds here? Truly spectacular. Oh, these people of Derry, what hospitality. The Irish are famous for their hospitality. Listen to this crowd in the background. They've been behind it the whole way. I've got shivers up my spine. Fantastic. Well, this is one fabulous race from Derry in Northern Ireland. We'll be back with more World Cup action from Japan.